Hello, everyone. Welcome to Behind the Mic. We are back. I'm with Mike. I'm Gary Robach. Glad to see you once again. Please remember Inside the Huddle with Mike Joseph. That, too, is on GoLeopards.com every single week. Right now, it is week one, and the adage is a leopard can't change his spots. Well, not be able to change their spots. Uh, Michael, with a new head coach of John Troxel, I think there is a new vibe on campus, a new enthusiasm on campus. And that's nothing but good. Uh, no, absolutely. And the way it's not only been on campus, but it's extending down into the community is amazing. You watch some of these, uh, the Twitter highlights and stuff like that. And, and John's just gotten out there and he's gotten people excited. He got ex them excited the day he arrived. He brought in a great staff that got people excited. And I tell you what, I just, this is one of the more uh, upbeat seasons that I've been ready for. I'm ready for a, a lot of guys coming back. I'm ready for a great defense and I'm ready to score some guys. You can get more upbeat. <laughs> I'm not sure that's possible. Well, we're going to have a real tough football team coming in here on Saturday for the 1230 game. It's Sacred Heart. The Pioneers come in with two consecutive uh, Northeast Conference titles, looking to get a third. They're favored to win their third. Their coach has been around a while, Mark Knopfrey, uh, in his 10th year. We haven't fared very well against this football team. Uh, five and one, they've won five in a row. Yeah, and, and think about what Mark Knopfrey's done there. I mean, he's really done a great job of bringing in some consistency and just continuing to win. Getting a good quarterback every year, a guy that can escape the pocket, and that's something that Rocky is really going to have to – uh, hang their hat on keeping that quarterback in the pocket. So they've done a great job getting into the playoffs. Obviously, the first round against Holy Cross last year, they were right on the precipice of winning that game. Um, but it was good to see a Patriot League uh, team come in and beat them. But they're going to be hungry because, you know what, a Patriot League team, team did beat them in the playoffs. They did. They did. They're going to have a chip on their shoulder for sure. They lost that game in the final 14 seconds, and uh, they lost it by a 13-10 to 10 score. Looking at this football team, they are loaded with fifth-year seniors. They have 18 fifth-year players. Just about everybody's back on this championship ball club, uh, led by Malik Grant, who is a running back All-American, just outstanding. Yeah, he's terrific, and he can do it all. He stays on the field all three plays. He's going to catch the ball out of the backfield. He's going to run between the tackles. Um, he gets downhill, and, you know, they obviously followed him up from a guy, Chestnut, who's now playing in the pros. Um, but Grant, Grant's a guy you have to stop. He's the main focus as you go into your defensive room early in the season, or at least three, two or three uh, weeks ago. The defensive coordinator, I'm sure, for Lafayette said, listen, we got to stop the run. That's so important. We're going to talk about that on Inside the Huddle. But stopping Grant. Keeping Marquez McCray in the box is going to be huge. That is the quarterback, Marquez McCray. He's outstanding. He's all NEC. He had a great year last year, 142 for 239. Almost 1,900 yards throwing the football with nine touchdowns. Defensively, they're just as strong, just as seasoned, just as much a veteran unit. Kevin Pepper is an All-American a defensive lineman. DeAndre Bird is their all NEC linebacker. They're just terrific. Yeah, if you look at them offensively uh, or defensively from the standpoint of Lafayette's offense, Pepper's the guy you got to put two guys on. Going to have to keep him out of the face of the young quarterback. Going to have to keep him, uh, you know, downhill. Get two guys on him. Maybe keep two guys on him and not release that guy up to the linebacker. But then you look at the linebacker level and you look at Bird. You got to get a guy on him as well. So what's Lafayette going to do? How are they going to run the football consistently? Mm -hmm. I think they're going to do it through some screens some quick maybe bubbles out to the outside, maybe get some of their athletic running backs in space. I think that's the way to do it because it's going to be tough sledding if you're trying to go downhill. Coach Troxell told us that certainly running the football is a big focus for this football team. Let's look at Lafayette a little bit. Their strengths, obviously their defense is outstanding. I mean, it starts with Malik Ham, Marco Olivas, but they're surrounded by really good defensive players. Yeah, all around, all around. I think the front seven is so strong up front. Are they going to be able to rush the passer? Absolutely. They're going to check that box. Can they stop the run? They're going to check that box. Can they run sideline to sideline with their linebackers? Absolutely. Aleve is so good um, on the outside. Billy Schaefer, I've heard nothing but amazing things about what he's doing on the field. If he can stay healthy, mm -hmm. first team all day, absolutely. Now, in the secondary, you got the two safeties, okay? Those kids can go downhill. They've gotten better. Safety White's gotten better, obviously. Uh, and, you know, you get some help from the corner, some good coverage, you're going to need that. But that's, I'll tell you what, this is going to be a fun group to watch. I wish I would have coached these 11 guys. Excellent. Great defense. You look at the skill position people, not so bad. We've got a couple of quarterbacks, uh, Sean Davis, and, of course, everybody talking about Ryan Schuster. So that looks pretty solid. Julius Young, Joe Gillette as wide receivers. Jaden Sutton, we've got a young guy coming in, Jermaine Conyers from yep. L&M. Somebody John knows very well. So the skill position people look pretty good. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be able to spread it around. You're not going to have to stop one guy. I think it's going to be important. How much is Ryan Schuster going to get? How many plays is he going to get? And then the other hand, how what has the progression been like 
for the other quarterback. Is he going to get better? We saw how well he could throw the ball mm-hmm. to Sean last year, standing in the pocket, not a guy that's really going to run the football, but can throw it downfield, force it downfield, um, and then a lot of weapons. And I think I talked to Coach Strzok earlier in the week, and he said, you're going to see some kids. You're going to see some different kids, maybe kids you haven't seen before. But the question for them is going to be that offensive line. Very good. Uh, yeah, that's a, you know, we talked about strength, certainly a concern. Yeah. Only two guys back in that starting unit on the offensive line, and they're going really quite young as uh, they've got a couple sophomores and freshmen to be starting. Yeah, it's going to be a question mark. Are they going to run some easy, solid plays they can hang their hat on? What has been good for them in the fall? What have they run well in the past 15 mm-hmm. days? Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be it. a lot of double teams get into the second level, a lot of strength, down blocks, things like that. And then every so while, I think they're going to be good on the inside run. I think they'll be solid from center to guard to guard. The question is, can they drop back and can they eliminate those third and long and second and long plays and stay on schedule? Another area of concern, and it's the same every single year, are the independence on your schedule. You certainly won't be favored to win any of those football games. What does that do to the mentality of the football player? And of course, we always seem to get an injury that we don't want uh, in one of those ball games. And just, what was your independent schedule like? Very similar. Uh, it, it wasn't. We played more Yankee. Con- they used to call it the Yankee Conference, where we played New Hampshire and Connecticut, and you know we went up to Rhode Island always and played those teams. We always had the Army game thrown in there or Navy. So we did have a strong independent schedule, but um, it it was earlier in the year where you try to find out who you are, and I think that's what Lafayette's going to find. They're going to find out who they are against Sacred Heart. Who they are against Temple and then William and Mary. So, but I tell you what, if you look at the Patriot League, boy, are we expanding out? Colgate, Stanford to open the season, and then uh, the guys playing Villanova. So, there's a lot of teams that are out there trying to find out where they're at. And you know what? You can't do that unless you play these big time teams. And I think Lafayette will find out on Saturday if this is going to be a team they can go forward with. Well, that leads me to my final question: Is that good or is that bad? I can only be good. I think Coach Strzok was all about challenge, all about putting these kids in the fire and finding out who they are, and not only them, but a new staff. How does his new staff handle it? Mm -hmm. How does he handle hands off? How does he handle someone calling defensive and offensive plays and he's got his hands off it? I think he's gonna be itching to make some calls here or there. So it's gonna be transition for everybody. Hopefully they can do it very quickly on Saturday. We'll answer those questions for you on Saturday at 12.30. That's kickoff. Mike will be there, I'll be there. Certainly a whole rest of the gang will be, be there to bring you Lafayette football. Join us at 12.30 where both of us We're behind the mic. Thanks for watching.